hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you decided to click on this video. So today I'm going to talk about some of the new releases that will be coming out in August of 2024. This was such a fun list to make. I decided to focus a little more on books that like I want to read because if you're following me, if you're subscribed to my channel, you probably like what I like. And in the past I've tried to like be a little more broad with books that you know are not necessarily ones I intend to read but like why so I have a lot of books to share with you today so I feel like we should just jump on in and start the video so August 6th is going to be quite a big day in the book publishing world the first book that I'm talking about is called and so I roar by Abby Duray this is like I said coming out August 6th and this is actually the sequel to The Girl with the Louding Voice, which was a book that I read several years ago. It was a read with Jenna pick. It was so popular and really well loved. It was definitely a five star read for me. So I'm very excited to read the sequel. So this one follows Tia, who I can't remember like all of the details of The Girl with the Louding Voice, but I know that she was the one who had helped Aduni, who runs away from her, her, like, lady? I can't remember what the term is that they use. Like, she works for this woman, but she's, like, not well-treated at all and stuff. So she helps her, she runs away, and so Aduni is now living with Tia, who gets her enrolled in school. And Tia overhears a conversation between her aunt and her mother, who is dying. The secret kind of alludes to some long hidden family things that she didn't know about. So when Tia gets back home to Lagos, Aduni is so excited about starting school, but they end up getting a knock on the door and at somehow whatever happens at that point makes it so that Tia pretty much needs to choose between protecting Aduni and her right to an education and learning the truth about her mother's secret that could be a dangerous secret. That was kind of my version of the synopsis. It, it doesn't really give too much away just based on what the publisher put out there, which is totally fine with me because at this point, you know, I love The Girl with the Louding Voice. A lot of people did. And so I feel like I trust this author to, to do right by her audience and make these characters, you know, really impactful and exactly, you know, who they were in uh, her previous book. So this one I'm just so excited about and I really am looking forward to continuing this story and learning more about how Aduni is doing and as far as getting educated and all of that. Another one on August 6th is called A Well-Trained Wife, My Escape from the Christian Patriarchy by Tia Levings. This is a memoir that I actually have already read and finished and I gave five stars to. This was a really powerful story. If you've been following me a while, you know that this is something that I'm very interested in is kind of leaving religion behind, particularly evangelicalism and just super extreme forms of religion. In this book, Tia, the main character, who is a person, so I don't know why I said main character. This is her memoir. Uh, she grew up in the Quiverful movement, which is what like the Duggars are. And in this movement, it's really emphasized that like, Husbands know best. Divorce is a sin. Um, your job as the, the woman, the wife, is to obey your husband and just pop out kids. Boom, 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 boom. So Tia grew up feeling a little bit like an outsider. She had these beliefs because she was told them. But for example, she grew up with a really close friend who ended up being gay and she didn't like cut him off. So like, a lot of her friends and family were like, I can't believe you would hang out with him. And she's like, well, I don't know. He's just my friend. So like she already was not like all in, but she was still, you know, trying to be who she thought God needed her to be. And so she's married to this man and he's, you know, a little at a time. She's becoming more and more isolated. And it's just horrifying the way that this relationship went. And you know, how they kept changing churches when something, the husband didn't agree with something. They keep moving into more isolated settings. It was just, it was just so powerful and painful to read. There are some pretty, pretty big mentions of animal abuse and domestic violence. So if that is something that will really bother you, 
maybe skip this one or I wish I knew exactly where it was in the book so I could just advise you where to skip it but it's just really really good to see how she's able to liberate herself from his clutches and you know finally realize that like why would God want this for me why would God want me to stay in this marriage that is so dangerous and I'm so unhappy in so I really recommend this if you you know are interested at all in kind of like how evangelicals like end up leaving the church and all that. Next is Plays Well with Others by Sophie Brickman. Again, this comes out on August 6th and this is contemporary fiction. More specifically, this is mommy drama, which I just live and die for. So this follows a woman named Annie who has three kids, an absent husband, and she's trying to get her son into like the premier top kindergarten, which is just a thing in itself. She used to be a New York Times journalist and now she writes like a parenting advice column for a startup. She starts, I think, documenting this process of trying to get her kids into this kindergarten or her son. And additionally, like this intense rivalry that she starts to have with a, another parent kind of in her preschool that's kind of doing the same crazy stuff. And the more out of control and embellishing she makes these stories, the more views she gets and more, you know, engagement, content, comments, all of this stuff. But apparently she's going to make some kind of faux pas that goes viral and she like, I guess, gets canceled, so to speak. Um, where she kind of has to look at herself and say like, wait, am I as bad as these parents? That's what I got for that one. I mean, <laughs> I love this kind of book. It's just an easy read where you can kind of just like sit back and watch other people's drama unfold, which sounds like ideal and honestly like a really good pick for summer like a vacation a beach whatever where you just need something that's kind of like you don't need to think too hard about it and is a quick easy read so I am definitely reading that one three more on August 6th next we have House of Bone and Rain by Gabino Iglesias and this is horror and it is the same author that wrote The Devil Takes You Home which came out a few years ago it was a book of the month pick and I loved it it was not like a universally loved book, but I thought it was incredibly scary. Like the body horror was off the charts. So I expect nothing less from this one as well. Um, so this is about five childhood friends that have just kind of always had this like aura of death around them. And like they live in Puerto Rico between car accidents, hurricanes, suicides. They've just like felt like the presence of death constantly. So now they're a little older and one of their mothers ends up getting shot dead and they all are like, oh, we will find who did this and we will kill him. So they end up finding out that that his mother was killed by some men that work for like the biggest like drug kingpin in Puerto Rico and no one who's ever like gone up against him has lived to tell the tale. So not great. Meanwhile, there is a storm, a big hurricane forming near Puerto Rico and I guess in their culture, they believe that like storms can like awaken evil spirits and like bring them onto the shore with the storm. So we'll see how that all plays in itself together. Much like in The Devil Takes You Home, there's gonna be a lot of mysticism, I think. So it's like very spiritual in like the sense of like um, witchy kind of stuff like that, um, healing and whatnot. Puerto Rican culture, which I think is really interesting. The previous book, I believe, was Mexican, a lot of Mexican culture and stuff. So I don't know what the author's ethnicity is, but I don't know. I assume it's well researched. And yeah, I, I'm not super big in body horror always, but these ones, yeah, his first one was incredible. So I'm really hoping the same will be true for this one. Another August 6th book, <laughs> House of Glass by Sarah Pekinen. This I actually have already read as well. This is a thriller. I ended up giving it four stars. I really did like it, but I just didn't think it was anything I was gonna like remember for years to come. So this is about a little girl named Rose. She's nine years old and she witnesses her nanny falling through a pane of glass to her death, which results in her like getting um, traumatic mutism which I didn't really know was a thing. I've always kind of been confused about like what is mutism and how does this happen, but apparently it can be triggered as like a trauma response. Her parents are going through a really bitter divorce and they're trying to keep it under wraps, but like things are not good. This is like a wealthy kind of uh, 
well-known family because of the house that they live in. So Rose, the little girl, ends up getting assigned a best interest lawyer who, you know, acts on her behalf because her parents are fighting. She's going through this traumatic thing, witnessing a death. And, you know, so her um, lawyer is named Stella and she actually also went through something traumatic as a child and also developed a period of time uh, where she was mute as well. So she can really like kind of relate to what's happening and you know she's trying really hard to connect to Rose but it's just not really happening. In the meantime Rose is having some extremely increasingly unsettling behavior. She you know is keeping like a box with lots of just like sharp objects that she finds and so there's definitely a question of like did Rose have something to do with this with this death? Was it was she pushed? Um, and like, what's the future look like in this situation? So yeah, troubled family, lots of secrets. I really liked this. Um, I think it's going to be pretty popular. It is a book of the month pick for July. So you certainly can get your hands on it early if you'd like to read it. And yeah, I think it's a pretty solid thriller and I would recommend reading it. The last one on the glorious day of August 6th is The Pairing by Casey McQuiston. This is the author of books like Red, White, and Royal Blue and One Last Stop. And I think they wrote another one that I'm not remembering because I didn't read it. But I'm very excited about this one. This is a queer romance and it sounds so cute. So this is about Theo and Kit and they have been best friends as ch children. They kind of grew up and revealed their feelings for each other. Then they were partners and they were on their way to a food and wine extravaganza tour in Europe and on this transatlantic flight they had some sort of really really nasty breakup. So I, it seems as though they landed and they just came right back home because they were like we're not doing this tour together now. So four years pass and they've separately lived their lives but then they both realize oh we need to go take this tour because these vouchers for the tour that's already paid for are going to expire. So each of them separately is like Okay, so like I'm gonna go take this by myself, that's fine. Well, you can see where this is going. They find each other, they are both on the same tour, and so that's not ideally how they wanted to spend this time. But they both say, okay, we there's nothing left between us. We are we are not together, this is like fine. And so then they make some kind of bet where like they're betting who can sleep with the hot Italian tour guide first. So that is what I got uh, for that one. It sounds fun. I mean, I like the any kind of setting that's just like, it sounds like it's going to be really cool. Like Europe, I think they definitely said Paris and um, like somewhere in Italy, I can't remember. Just these really like cities that you can, you can really feel in your head when you're being described them to you. And so I really just think that this is going to be a fun book. And it's like a romance, so you always know how it's going to end, which just like kind of makes you go like, okay, so I can just enjoy the ride. So I think that is going to be a really, really fun one. On August 13th, we have Till Death Do Us Part by Lori Elizabeth Flynn. She wrote a book a few years back that I read called The Girls Are All So Nice Here. I enjoyed it. I didn't love it. But I am really hopeful about this one. That one, I don't need to tell you about anyways. <laughs> this is a mystery. I think it's kind of supposed to be a thriller, but based on the synopsis, it doesn't necessarily seem like it's a thriller. It seems far closer to just the mystery side, but we'll see. So this is about a woman named June who was on her honeymoon with her husband where he drowned and died. Obviously, that's really terrible and hard to get over. But 10 years later, she's engaged to someone new. She owns a um, organic wine bar in Brooklyn and like things are finally going to be okay. She's like at a place where she's ready to move on. And then she's out one day and she sees her husband and she is first of all like, am I hallucinating? Like what is happening? I, he's dead, I can't be feeling this way. And then she's like on her website, I guess, just like doing doing stuff for her job. And she finds this winery in Napa, California with a, the picture of a man that looks identical to her husband. So, you know, her fiance is pretty like unsure of her and how she is ready to get married again. And like, I guess she's been giving some signs where it's just like, you know, he's a little concerned. So she doesn't tell him, I don't think, to go 
out to California and check this guy out and see what the hell's up. So that is pretty much the summary of that book. And I mean, it sounds cool. It reminds me a little bit of One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Of course, that is not really a thriller. It's just a similar plot line, like my husband is missing presumed dead and then I move on and then, oh my gosh, he's back. So I think this is gonna be a really interesting um, book to see what happens. And I'm excited for like the mystery stuff because I don't know, this just, it sounds cool. Next we have The Snap by Elizabeth Staple. This also comes out on August 13th. This, I can't really tell if it's contemporary fiction or like a thriller. I feel like it's maybe contemporary fiction with like thrilling tendencies. So this is about a woman named Poppy who's the media relations director for a fictional NFL team. Along with other high-ranking women in professional sports, they have formed the WAGs, which is not the WAGs you think it is. This one stands for Women Against Groping Shitheads. WAGs normally is like wives and girlfriends, and that's what they call like, you know, that, that section. Oh, this is the room for the WAGs um, during like sporting events and stuff. So they came up with their own and it's kind of just a, a little way for them to like vent their frustrations and you know all of the things that are just not equal in sports and sports reporting, sport, just the whole industry. So then the head coach of the team that Poppy works for is found dead and every uh, member of the WAGs gets a note saying like we will find you or something to that effect. Something threatening you don't want to hear about. So the group who has, you know, been very secret is like, A, at risk of being exposed, and B, Poppy apparently in the past had a secret. She made a bad call early in her career that now is potentially going to come to light. So we'll see. This one is kind of getting mixed reviews so far. I think it sounds good. I really enjoy like kind of I don't want to say revenge stories because it doesn't sound exactly like a revenge story, but like something that is like women being bad bitches. So <laughs> I hope that's what it turns out to be. I hope that the wags win this one. We will see. Burn by Peter Heller also comes out on August 13th. This is like a dystopian fiction. It sounds so crazy and cool and gives me big like the stand energy. So that's always a good sign. So this is about two friends who every summer will take a trip to Maine where they are like just hunting and camping and and hiking and they're just completely off the grid. On the way up, you know, before they, they go on their trip, there's a lot of like discourse in the United States and a lot of states are talking about like seceding. So that's cool. <laughs> so they go up and have their trip in Maine and when they get back to like the first like small town they come to, like bridges are burnt down, buildings have completely like blown up, there's cars that have like are just destroyed and abandoned, and they are like, what in the holy hell happened while we were gone for two weeks? And so they basically have to find their way home through this absolute like battleground, trying to find out what happened, and there's like, you know, lots of guys with guns, but are they good guys or bad guys? And it just, it sounds like a real adventure kind of survival story, but really, I just think it's a really, I don't know, I might be reading too much into it, but it seems like it's a really interesting take on the state of things in the United States right now and what it could look like if, you know, in a fictionalized way, but you know what I'm saying. There's a lot of bad things happening right now in America. And so I am interested to see if there is some kind of political commentary as well in the text. Another one on August 13th is The Breakup Pact by Emma Lord. This is an author that I've really enjoyed reading her books. She's mainly a young adult author, but I have, I think this is her second adult book, if I'm not mistaken. So I haven't read her other one. I've read a few of her young adult books. One of them I adored. The rest I was like, these are good. Um, so this follows two ex-best friends, June and Levi, who like both end up at the same time getting dumped in like public and humiliating ways and it goes viral on the internet. I don't exactly know what like how does that happen to them both at the same time, but I'm willing to give it a shot. And uh, and so they become kind of like these insta celebrities and an old picture of them, you know, finds its way to the internet and everyone's like, oh my god, look at them. They 
both got dumped and now they're together. So they decide to kind of use this to their advantage to make the most of what they can out of this. So June is running a tea shop. She owns the place and it's kind of struggling. So she's like, oh, this is going to be publicity for my shop. This is going to be awesome. And Levi is really trying to get back with his ex. So he's like, okay, well, we'll make her jealous. Like this will be great. So I'm sure there's fake dating. Not sure what other like tropes are going to be in here. I'm still a little confused on the exact like dynamics of how this breakup situation happens but you know I'm I'm here for it I'm ready to find out and uh, yeah it should be a cute read another one that I am really excited for is by any other name by Jodi Picoult this comes out on August 20th I cannot wait so this is a set in dual timelines. One of them is in 1581 and the other one is present day. And honestly, at first this kind of turned me off because I was like 1581, like pass. But it sounds like such a cool kind of synopsis. So this is about a, a young woman in 1581 named Amelia. She, you know, is a woman. She's a young woman. She has no really control or say over what's going on in her life, but she loves to write. She ends up becoming the mistress to the Lord Chamberlain and that gives her access to like all the theater community in England. So she ends up meeting a man named William Shakespeare who she says, okay, I'm going to write these plays and you can take the credit because I just, you know, I want them produced. I want them mounted and you'll just get all the credit for it. So, I mean, this is a fictional book, but that is really cool. Um, so then in the present day, Melina is a aspiring playwright. She finds out about her ancestor Amelia through an ancestry website and she writes a play inspired by her but even though it's like 400 years after the fact <laughs> the theater community is still not equal and Melina basically gets the opportunity to have her play mounted if she's willing to like relinquish credit for writing this play. So I'm interested to see where it goes. Jodi Picoult is always fantastic at just the the pure writing of of writing the the prose uh, she writes beautiful sentences and I always except for one that I absolutely hated I've loved her books that I've read all of them so I'm willing to bet I'm gonna love this I have actually gotten an advanced copy I did start reading a bit of it and it so far so good I will say that's based on like maybe 10% of the book so you know, still plenty of time for things to go south, but I am confident that this will be really good. And again, that comes out August 20th. And lastly, um, also on August 20th, we have Someone in the Attic by Andrea Mara. This, I'm just gonna read you the straight up synopsis because it's really creepy. It doesn't give much away. And I feel like it's, I feel like whatever I say is just not gonna be as good. And so it says, Anya is enjoying a relaxing bath when she hears a noise coming from the ceiling. Through the open bathroom door, she sees the attic hatch swing down and a masked figure drops to the floor. 30 seconds later, Anya is dead. Across town, Anya's old school friend Julia sees an online video of a masked figure climbing out of an attic. She suddenly realizes why the footage is eer eerily familiar. It was filmed inside her house in a luxury gated community designed to keep intruders out. Why would a stranger target Julia? Unless of course, it's not a stranger at all. So I just think that sounds super creepy it kind of reminds me of a book that I just finished reading, Night Watching, and I really loved that. So just like this creepy like home invasion kind of situation, but it seems like there's more to this than like meets the eye. It seems targeted, so we'll see. I think that's going to be really good, and I just got an advanced copy, so I hopefully can report back before its publication date and let you know what I thought of it. So August has a ton of books coming out. I barely scratched the surface, but these were all ones that really spoke to me that I think that my viewership will enjoy as well, and hopefully we can all discuss them at a future date. I once again want to thank you for watching this video. I appreciate you so much. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, I would love it if you would. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.